So my name is Rod. I'm a data analyst and a graphic designer. I'm designing a content creation also. So I'm familiar with uh, design, Premiere Pro, After Effects, and then sometimes Canva, Illustrator also. And I believe I'm going to be the person data for today. We're just familiarizing with, with Canva. And then I was mentioning that if you are, if it's your first time creating an account, logging in, I went through that with us. So for that, uh, if I was not being heard, I think it would be proper for me to just go back and then get us to sign in again briefly, and then we can go ahead and do this. Yeah, so I'm mentioning that if you go to canva.com, you get a login or sign. So if you're a new user, you're definitely going to sign up. So you go to sign up here, and then you can choose the various options available for you to sign up. For that you just need to log in into your account. So I was saying that if you're someone that does not like to be entering passwords on every site, you definitely want to go with continue with Google so that you get to log in with your Google account. So for me, I'll just do that. Continue with Google, then I'll select this account because predominantly that's what I use for Canva. Yeah. So that opens up Canva. This is how the interface looks like. Over here, you have Rabin Yahoo's team. So what I have here now, or this page, or this particular account I've selected, is a team. So I've created this with somebody else, this person. So we have two people on this. So I get to collaborate with the person on certain designs that I've designed. And over here, you have home, you have template. So you have tons of templates to choose from. Presentations, social media, videos business, social media, video marketing, custom prints, cards and invitations, a whole lot, okay? A whole lot of templates. Yeah, a whole lot of templates. And then you have, you have your projects. So projects are the things that you've been working on already. When you look at recent designs, these are some of the things that I've worked on a few times. And you have brand, you have content planner, you have Discover apps. So these are external apps that you can integrate with Canva. You have smart mockups. And I mentioned that mockups give you a realistic feel to especially product design when you're creating maybe t-shirts and you want it to look more realistic so that it doesn't come only the design, the 2D design form, but then it's on something that somebody, a client or someone can interact or see it realistically. Mockups are a good way to go. Then we have content plan. This allows you to schedule your content that you design so that you can automatically post on social media and other places. Yeah. And I'm mentioning that for these two brand and content planner, it just indicates that if for pro users, so pro users have this crown on certain features before you can access them. And then to start off, if you want to start a new design, you can just come here go to create design, whatever you want to create. So if it's a document, if it's a presentation, infographic, info dot Instagram post, the sizes are available, if it's a video. If you want to have a custom size, you can just go ahead and then select that also. And then you can go ahead and start your design. Just to give us a brief. Okay, so up here also, you get to see design spotlight, giving you some features. Some of the things available, business, if you are using Canva for business, some of the things that Canva can help you with. So all of these things are here. You talk of education, how you can, Canva can help you to do the things that you do that relate to education. So if you have a learning management system, an LMS, you can integrate Canva with that. And then also plans and pricing. So if you want to be, for well, I am a free user. If you want to be a pro user, if you want to be great teams, you can sign up with any one of them. Yes. Is that, that's just a brief introduction to Canva. I believe that we'll, we'll talk more as we go on. Okay. A very interactive set. Okay. Some design. Yeah. This is my wrong. I'm going to be learning pre design. First of all, let's see. Okay, so I think you basically covered the basics of 
platform, mm-hmm. then how I'm a, I'm a you know, leader. Uh, I don't want to be calling a graphic designer every day to create simple design for me. I want you to, to, to paint in canvas. So can you take us through a simple flyer or for either Facebook or so it's going to be more interactive if you have any questions. All right, sure. I think we, we have only Kizzy here with us. So looks like Kizzy, we're going to do this together. Let me know if you can hear me. And then I'm not sure if you can be unmuting at a certain point in time so that we get more interactive. If you can't, that's fine. I believe you can put anything in the chats and then pick it up from there. I, anytime I get opportunity to lead or teach anybody Canva or anything designing, I just like to teach them the basics, right? Because I believe that graphic design is so broad. There's, there are people who are doing so much in terms of art and design. Art itself is, is so much. But when the principles, however, are the same possible, because if it is alignment, anybody creating a certain design has that in mind. If it is certain concepts like framing, great use and all of that, all those things cut across. So when the understanding of the basic is there, then the person can really use to, to their advantage and they use it quite well. Just to mention some few basic concepts in graphic designing, and then we'll come back to Canva and then try to practicalize what we mentioned. I think yeah. that there are, there are some concepts or some terms that we need to familiarize with. So as a design, there are some terms like arrange, group, align, distribute, scale, constrain, rotate, capacity, transparency, crop, hue, saturation, and lightness. So these are some terms that we use as graphic designer. And I'm going to try to take it one by one, talk briefly because we don't have much time, talk briefly about it. Then these things will guide us whenever we are designing, because for any design tool, these things are embedded one way or the other, and these things make you a good graphic designer. So what the objective that I seek to do is that not only to train us in the use of Canva, but also to be able to help us to be able to tell what a good design is. So if you see a design from your graphic designer, you should be able to say, this is a good designer. I think it's ready to go. Or you should be able to give them specific comment because that helps their work so that they're able to improve on any design that they send you. So when we talk of arrange, it's just a matter of whenever you have a tool, I think we can be doing this alongside. So come into Canva, go ahead to create design. So let's say we are creating an Instagram post. So it's a square and that opens Canva for me like this. Great. So we have Canva. So let's say I have, let me try and look for a simple design. So maybe something like this. So we want to create a simple design like this. When we talk of arrange on the principle of arrange, what it means is that for this design, this is a layer on its own. This picture is a layer on its own. So they are arranged in that the picture is behind this sort of square Instagram, Instagram interface mockup. So that is the arrangement we are talking about and in design. You want to be familiar with it because this helps you if you want to move something around, if you want to behind the in Canva, how we do that is come here and then you can take it backwards. All right. When you take it backwards, so in terms of arrange, the photo is now behind this white square. If I want to bring it forward, I bring it and it's back there again. So that's a little bit about arrange. Now we talk of group. So well, in terms of group, what you seek to say you have this design. Um, this is what we are seeing. So it looks like when you say not on the display. Or are we on track? It's on the display. Yeah, this is what we are seeing. So, oh, sorry, I logged into another Canva tab. I don't... 
Okay. So when you looked at your keyboard, your mouse was in the ring, but you were still talking. Okay. Sorry, sorry. So I think if it, if you won't know mine, you can share your entire screen instead of sharing individual tabs. Okay. Because when you move to different tab, we didn't see that tab. Because we... I think you can see it now. Yes. Great. All right. Yeah. So I was talking about the principle of arrange and I was saying that for different. So can you back share a little on okay. how you got here? We didn't know how you got here. Just came here. Okay. So I was talking about some terms in graphic design and I was saying that my objective here in terms of gra the graphic design is not to show you that, okay, you have to put a square here. If you are making a flyer and you put a square here, no. I just believe that when the person is equipped with the basic concepts of design, anybody at all can design something. Because when you wake up in the morning, you are a designer. Because you choose the clothes you wear, you choose the color combinations you wear, and these are concepts in design. So everybody at all can design something. They just need to grasp the concepts and then also be able to be a good judge for a good design, be able to tell this is a good design. This is not a good design. So those are the concepts I seek to impact to us. And then I was saying that when you talk of the principle of arrange, so in graphic design, we have something for arrange. And what we mean by that is that when you take the Instagram post square we have here, this image that I've highlighted and moving around on the screen. You realize that it's in front of this white square, not exactly a square. Maybe let me make that a square so that I can refer to it as a square. It is in front of it. Okay. Now, in terms of arrange, because they are layered in my composition, I can choose to take this one behind the white square. And to do that in Canva, I can just go up here, position. Then I can choose to take it backwards. Or I can choose it to bring it to the front, so forward. If I take it to the back, what it does is that it takes it to the last layer. So everything else, every other layer on this composition, it takes it behind. So you realize that it is even behind this image over here. If I bring it to the front, it becomes the very first or topmost layer. So those are the principles. Over here, we have top. Alignment, so it aligns it automatically to the composition I have or the page. So if I align to the top, it goes up here. If I align to the bottom, it comes below. If I align to, it goes this way. If I align to left, it goes this way. If I align to the center, middle. So those are the kind of arrangements we can do even in Canva. Okay. Now, another principle is alignment. So Alignment, we've already covered that alignment is this. And then we talk of arrangement that is bringing it backward, forward, and all of that. Now, another term is distribute. So in terms of distribute, when you use other softwares, because we are limited in scope to Canva now, but other softwares allow you to do that where you can go ahead. If you select two, two elements or two layers in your composition, it allows you to be able to distribute them evenly. So if I want to distribute this, so I have two layers, I can then arrange between the layers or I can choose to align these two layers to each other. So we realize that initially, if I choose top, if I choose top for this one, it goes there. But when I select these two layers and I choose top, see top, you realize that both of them, I choose middle, you realize that it then aligns to this one. So it means that the reference now becomes the two layers. The reference becomes the two layers I've selected. Great. So another term is scaling, scaling. Now, when we talk of scaling, I can choose to make this big. I can choose to make this big. I can choose to make it small. That is scale. So in terms of scale, that is it. However, when we talk of constraint, constraint is scaling proportionally, right? So instead of, you realize that when I'm scaling this, it can just, the aspect ratio is not intact. Okay. But if I want to do this quite well for most graphic designing tools, you just have to press shift on your keyboard 
and then you realize that now when I move it, it is moving proportionally. Okay. So every part of the image is moving. I have, I've hold down shift on my keyboard and I'm doing this. I'm going to leave the shift now. And then you realize that now you see what's happening. By the moment I hold the shift, then now you see that the constraint is, the constraint term is, is now being put in use in that every part of the image is being scaled at the same time. So it keeps the aspect ratio intact and that's that. Okay. And then we have rotate. So in Canva, this is the rotate button. This clockwise and anti-clockwise arrow down here is the rotate button. So if you click it, if you click and hold on it, and then you can move it around. So you rotate your image in that manner. Great. Now, if you hold on, if you hold on shift while you are doing this also, it helps you rotate it using, so constraint coming. So now it is moving in a certain proportion. Okay, great. And then we talk of opacity, crop, and then hue. Those will be the last three terms. Now, when we talk of opacity in Canva, let's create a new page. Okay. And then uh, let's see, let's copy this image. Then let's paste the image here. Now, say I want to add text on this image. Okay. So I go to element. Okay. So let me just add the text first. So I can add a text box in Canva. As we are going on, we are learning so many things at the same time. Feel free to stop me if you need clarity in anything because it's an interactive session. So you get to ask questions as we go on. So adding text in Canva on your left pane, you just go to text over here. Then now you can add a text box. And then let's say I add uh, any text at all. So let me just use Kizzy. Kizzy was with us from the beginning. So Easy. Okay. So let's say I want to make this big. I can change the font size over here. So I can work by increasing the font size. I can decrease the font size this way. I can choose a different font style. We have different font styles here. I can choose different font styles. I like bold fonts. So let me go with this. Okay. Now I can also increase it by going this way. Okay. Great. Now suppose we have this. Okay. This Gizzy is quite visible on the image and it gives a very good contrast. Another principle that will come in graphic designing, or another thing will come to learn in graphic design. But suppose see in, in other images, you encounter an image where you don't get the text blending or the text being visible the way Gizzy is this way. Okay. Or suppose we want to, okay, even improve on making this Gizzy even more visible. What we can do is to sublime. So another term, sublimation. Feel free to slow me down. I think I'm talking a lot and I'm mentioning different terms, but I believe that there'll be a question time. Is that only okay, people so can get to ask questions? Anyone can interact and talk. So I think we'll take questions at the end of the session. Anyone can interact. If you want to press them, just speak up. And then I see still answer. So it's supposed to be an interactive session. So that's why we didn't have a serious setting that we had issues with accounts. I have a question. The idea here is that we want to make Gazy, our text Gazy, more more visible because when you look at it this way, you realize that the contrast in here, the white and this background sort of blends in a little. So it makes the text not so very vividly visible. So if you want to make it more visible, improve on its visibility, one principle we can use is what we call sublimation. And in doing that, what we do is that we adjust transparency, opacity, those are different terms, but it's the same concept. So I can put a new square here. So let again. So in Canva, I can just go to element. And then I have different shapes here. So lines and shapes, you can click to see all the lines and shapes available. 
And then I have this shape, so I can just click on the shape. It gives me this shape. I can change the color to say black. All right. And then let's say I try to, so just to create a concept where the character is looking at the name, I bring it here. Good. Now you realize that because it has a black background, the text is more visible because black and white create a very good contrast. Okay. So the text is more visible, but the black is blocking some parts of the character's face or the model in the background's face. So when we talk of sublimation or when we talk of transparency, where it becomes useful is over here. So just to make it blending, okay. I can just go ahead and decrease the transparency of my sheet. And to do that, three dots here, and then I go to this one. Okay. So it says transparency. So when I click on that, then I can decrease the transparency. Okay. So to say, great. So at 30, now I can see. So can you draw? Yeah, sure. So Hi, Gezi. I was just asking what the sublimation means. She's saying that what is sublimation? Region, region, so you can elaborate what sublimation is. So sublimation is, like I mentioned, the principle in design, the principle in graphics. Basically, what it takes to estimate that sometimes when you have designs and you want it to lock all your designs together, in cases where you manipulate the transparency or the opacity of two images so that they blend in, that's what we term as animation. Okay. And so I was trying to demonstrate an example of that over here, where I'm decreasing the opacity of this square. Remember, initially it was very dark like this. And I was saying that it is blocking a part of this image. Okay. So when I decrease the transparency and, and now blend scene with the background image. So that's what we mean by sublimation so that you have everything sublimed together. I don't know if it's clear that way. Yeah. That's Gizzy responded. So Gizzy, feel free to, to let me know if you. Okay. So you can actually speak if you want to. It's supposed to be an interactive session. It's supposed to have a studio setting that cover issue with our camera. So. That's why we are afraid to use this play screen. Okay. So you can just interrupt. You know, you are trying your designers for you to share. You just let them know. You share your screen and then you correct what this correct is. That's what the sessions are all. We are here to learn. So by the end of the session, you should also know how to create designs in uh, Pro. I've shown their platforms for our non-profits. So I think she said it's great. All right. This is an interactive session, so you can feel free to log in or sign up to Canva and then let's do this together, right? Let's do this together. I believe that would increase the interactivity over here. Yes. So that's what we mean by sublimation. So now you realize that Gizi is now better, better visible than initially. Why? Because we've given it a black background. And then also we've created it in such a way that it is now blendingly with our image. Okay. If I have it somewhere here, that it's not quite visible that there's a background, but there is indeed a background and it is accomplishing the task of increasing the visibility of the text that we overlay on the image. Okay. So in certain instances when you are designing and you have to overlay text on an image, these are good ways to go about it so that you increase the visibility of your text. Great. Awesome. All right. We can go on. We can go on. Now, the last thing I'm going to talk about is hue, saturation, and then lightness. So hue just refers to color. So what color are you using? So suppose uh, I'm creating another red temple. Let me increase the transparency. So what color of this rectangle? That's what we call hue. I have different colors. So if you want to, sorry, if you want to change the color of your square in Canva, you can just go up here where you have sheep. 
you have color over here, then you can choose different colors. Okay. So different colors available here. You can choose some of them. Now, when I have these colors chosen, that is what we call hue. Okay. So hue is what color? What is the color? Now, when we talk about saturation, just refers to how vivid the color is. Okay. So between these two or between these three, let's say I come here, I change the opacity to say 17. No, let me say eight. And then this one, I change it to say three. Great. So you see that we have the same blue color, but the, how vivid it is decreasing as we go this way. So that is saturation. Okay. How vivid the color is. That's that. Is that our time? How long of time we have? Very okay. little tell. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Okay. So I think we really actually mean to make this to people, but it looks like it's more than we are speaking. Uh -huh. So you can proceed from a little. Sure, sure. So that's with the colors. I, I think you sort of captured everything that we went to call the own in this presentation. That is, I think, resizing a design and then uh, connecting to the still apps. So I think we're going to be talking about the camera crew, then that will be the next session, then we're out. So you can continue with what you I think we are really enjoying the session. We didn't think we'll have a much detailed range here. So we we're talking about just doing some basics. But I think we are really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. All right. Okay. Like I mentioned, what I seek to do is not only to teach us graphic design. Yes, we can use Canva too, but there are times that you consult a graphic designer to work for you. You don't have to be the best design to see a good design. So it will, that, that's, it's not a grammatical error or it's not a statement, but I'm deliberate to say that we need to learn to see good design. Okay. So learning to see good design, you are a cleaning session or an interactive session. I want us to see ourselves as objects. So when you are walking by the roadside and you see a billboard and you see any flyer on social media, what you will be doing as a critic is be able to identify the various elements, be able to say that this is a good design, this is not a good design, this is a good design, this is not a good design. And those principles are the things that we are learning. And then by the time we are done, once you are able to critique work, then you yourself can also design work. Okay. Well, let's just go ahead. I think that initially I sought to talk about some principles and all of that. But I think I would make it more of an event, a live thing. So once we are designing, we are building new, new concepts. I'm introducing new concepts and we are learning about that. So I'll go ahead and create another page here. So when you open Canva, this is how Canva is. If you want to add a page to a particular design you're working on, you can just go here, add a page. Okay. And it creates a totally new page for you. Now. Suppose we are an NGO. So does that, maybe you can give me an example of one. No. So let me ask our participants. Aside Gizzy, do we have somebody else joining in? Okay. You can tell that because the video made that with a bit of you in. All right. Gizzy, you mentioned you work for what organization? I work for domestic violence helpline called Strong okay, Hearts. So, sorry. Can you come again? Sorry. It's a domestic violence helpline. Okay. So domestic violence. Help. All right. So say, Gigi, I believe that part of your works would entail maybe creating awareness on domestic violence. Right? Yeah. As a designer. Or so for anyone else who will come to view our content later, say for whatever organization you're working in, maybe an activist, anything like that. When you want to design a flyer, or put anything out there using Canva or any graphic design tool. Say you want to, most often, the first thing we'll do is, okay, I'm going to, okay, maybe easy help me. What kind of flyers do you do? Give me a clear example, something we can design here. 
okay, one of the taglines is no judgment, just talk. So people call the line. So I'll make a flyer with no judgment, just talk and like pictures. And then we put our phone number and logo, for example. Okay. Okay. I think, is it possible to, can you hear me? Yeah. Is it possible if you would like to share your screen, but it's a design that put me in the past and then um, Ravi can take a look at it because he talk about, we spoke about as a designer, you have to be a critic. You see a design. Yeah. This is really great. The, the use of files, the use of a pass. First, to uh, think, if you could share your screen, you are actually a presenter. So you could actually okay. share screen. Yeah, I would appreciate that because my questions are not really about how to use Canva, but what parameters do you like to use to make a design more unique? Great. So let me find a design and then share the screen. That means I have to stop sharing. Oh my goodness. I don't know. You can find it. Okay, I think yes. Robbie can continue. When you play this, then you share it. Okay. Gizzy, can you help me with a tagline again? You said just talk. No, no judgment, just talk. So again, we're going to add some text. So we'll add the text word, no judgment. I actually have been using the Adobe Creative Cloud Express a lot. Okay. Just because we have the Creative Cloud suite, but I like Canva better for the video reel editing. Could I understand that? Makes that work easier. Okay, now, one thing that most people do and as designers is necessary as we draw inspiration as designers from a lot of things. So when you are walking by the roadside, when you are seeing designs and you are critiquing these designs, okay? So say this is not a good design. I think they could have done this, that what you are doing is that you are drawing inspirations from some of these designs to better your own designs, okay? Whatever design you see out there, it is only helping you it inspires you so that you learn something and then you get to design better on your own. So say what Gizzy mentioned, no judgment, just talk. For a designer or for someone starting out, the best thing would be they want to see other people's work that they've done. So people would just go to Google. Gizzy, can you help me with see something you would search on Google when you are designing a fly like Okay, so maybe the, uh, most people will come into Google and search for, okay, uh, domestic, because the, uh, his works in the domestic violence helpline, domestic violence by, by, by. So these are the things that people would normally search for anybody designing anything and they want to see other people's work. These are the things that they will search for. So they will go ahead and search for this. And then you see that when you search for this, okay, what you are going to get is basically the same thing everybody else is doing. Okay. So when I look here, the designs here, you can see they are all similar. It's just colors and lots of purples, lots of violet. I'm not sure if that has anything to do with domestic violence. Maybe it you a bit better to tell me that, but a lot of the flyers here, they look virtually the same. Now as a designer, you want to do something outstanding, something that's different from what everyone else is doing. Okay. And so idea creation, that brings us to the first thing. And when you are creating an idea, you then out there and look for what everybody else is doing. Okay. So you need to look outside the box. And that is one thing that, that we always constrain ourselves within find ourselves to whatever we are designing. Okay. So if I'm bringing something domestic violence, I don't need to, I don't need to necessarily search domestic violence. Okay. We can search something different. It could be maybe a magazine, a magazine that you know that it talks about some of these things. It could be something because most victims of domestic violence are women. So something that talks about women empowerment, something like that, something outside the ordinary. Okay. But for me, something that is coming to mind is they would seem quite odd, 
but let's say I make a search of Chinese, Chinese, Chinese demonstration. Okay. These are the kind of images I'm seeing here. Let's say something like Chinese. Okay. So these are the things that I'm seeing here. Remember, we are drawing inspiration. We are drawing inspiration. And a lot of this inspiration comes from seeing other people's work. Mind you, I didn't go around searching for domestic violence, no. But this is what I searched for. And the idea is that I'm trying to draw inspiration from this. Okay. So let's say, let me click on this one over here. See this one over here. Okay. Something like this. So I can draw an inspiration over here. Okay. Where this woman, you see, there are some people behind here. Try to bring. So as I'm looking at these things, I'm already imagining how my design is going to be like. I'm already imagining how the design is going to come out. You have something like this here, this one. Okay. So I'm drawing so many inspirations from this. Okay. Now, when I come back to my design, when I come back to my design, what is my tab? Great. So let me share this. This is your following, eh? Do you see your image already? You want to share it? I have one if you want to see it. Do you see that briefly? You have to stop sharing so I could share. Uh -huh. This is it. Can you see it? Yeah, I can. Great. Great. Does it do you mind working us through maybe what inspired you, the kind of message you wanted to communicate? Yeah. Two Spirit is like indigenous for our LGBTQ family, okay. uh, but it's more of a spiritual way of being. And so I saw this picture of a person with the land because for Native people, the land is very sacred and important to us. So he, they are standing with the arms out. And so I, to demonstrate the two spirit, I put these two opacity blocks. Exactly. So this is, this is sublimation just to, sorry. Oh, yeah. I just never knew the word. <laughs> But yeah, put these two blocks to divide it in half, like with the mountain and the arms to give some symmetry. This thick text, honoring two-spirit brilliance and resilience. Simple little rainbow line. And then our logo and phone number. Real simple design. Great design. It looks good. I like the fact that there are some contrast in the background. The shape of the mountain over here create a certain contrast and then the sublimation in there, the text and all of that. It looks look good. So as a critic, I don't know if you mind me, Peter K. I'm yeah, not, not, not going to be, forgive me if I go too hard or. Too no, go hard. I don't care. <laughs> 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 this, this part of my comment. Okay. One top most thing with design is alignment. Okay. Can I try? Okay. So if you want us to continue. We can continue the session if you want us to continue, or we can wrap up. I think we are really enjoying the session too. So I wish we could continue beyond the that's the right time. We can still continue if you just want to. You want to stay in the session. Okay. I can be here like 15 more minutes. That'll be great. So I think I'll wrap up with the non profit package. So uh, those who are into non profit and who subscribe on the Come up and improve it. I will be, I will make sure that I'm in a session. So we can do 15 more minutes. Right. Okay. Thank you. Right. When I look at this design, first thing is alignment. Okay. Now, most people are tempted to think that when you have text, okay, centered in on your composition, it's, it translates to it's being visible. So, most people will put it up in the middle. So this is good. Most people will actually bring it up in the middle, like the exact middle here, like somewhere, yes, around there. Because they feel, yes, because they feel that way people will see it. But it doesn't work like that, okay? 
because what you do is when you do this, it's looking like it's going down there. So you would preferably want to bring it up. Exactly. That's good. So I like that about it. Okay. Now, in terms of fonts, in terms of font style, I'd recommend that usually just yes, stick to two. Okay. Stick to two. Now, the two would be detected by other instances happening. So suppose you have a logo that has a text in the logo. Mind you, if the logo is forming a predominant part of the design, it means that text is going to be also quite visible. So if you should add two to those texts, that makes it three. You get it? So preferably, you may want to adapt the, text, the font in the logo as part of your two fonts so that at the end of the day, you are still working around two fonts. Okay. Okay. Great. So over here, the strong hearts has a different font. And yeah, th these are both Optima. Okay. Bold, and then this Optima extra black was the this one. Okay. Okay, and then the helpline they are also Optima. Great. So I I see that being applied there. That's great. Next thing is see colors. So I'm just trying to highlight the different instances where you can critique here yeah, because you mentioned also, yes, colors. Okay. For this design, I like that you incorporate the colors in the rainbow. So I realized that for you use the, the, the purple on the, toward the right part of your design, the rainbow bar on the right side, right? From the yeah. right side, then. You use the, the green over here, but the green would something more close to the green in the bar because the green here is slightly different from the green in the rainbow bar. Okay. So you may want to pick something predominant, the green that is predominant in the gray. And then, so one other thing you can do is that when you are subliming, okay, or when you are trying to combine two images together. The background image, okay, what you can do is to make it monochrome so that it just gives you, so when you make it monochrome, then now it just only become like a shadow in the background so that it's not contributing so much in terms of color to your design. Because what you are interested in is to creating the impression that the image is behind there. Mm. But when the colors are in there still, because you decrease the opacity of the colors you are using, then it becomes a lot of colors going on at the same time. You can just undo and yeah. Great. So you see, we are getting there. Okay. So that now, so now you have two main colors interplaying here, the violets and the green. Okay. Great. Now we can look at text, positioning of text. Okay. One thing you can do is say honoring to spirit. You want these text. That's the predominant part. Okay. So between those two texts, which one do you want to portray or which one do you want to come out? Which one do you want any person who views this design to, to capture first? Which one do you want someone looking at this design to portray? Two spirit, honoring two spirit. Honoring two spirit. Okay. So we can make that both. So let's do this. So let's just write. So let's take the two spirits off. Great. Then let's create another text box and then write the two. No, just two. Just two. Great. And then spirits. Good. And then with the positioning. Okay. Now let's try positioning it at using our rule of points. What we mean by rule of that? Yeah. Okay, great. But let's not too much to the middle. Let's uh, reduce the size a little. Yeah. But towards our left, more towards our left. Yes, something like that. Great. Can we use it? Can we use it a little? Hmm. Can we use the honoring a little? Make it smaller? Yeah. What size? It's 90 now, so oh, maybe try 86. Okay. I like 
Okay, okay, it's fine, it's fine. I like that the G is in the green. So, good. Now, let's make the two, make it bigger. So I think you can make it bold. So make it bigger. Yeah, bigger. Yeah, it no, it's good. And then maybe bring it, good. So bring it a little towards the end, align it. So one other thing is alignment. Okay, good. So align it to the handrail, good. Then you can, good, great. So maybe we can bring the spread a little up. Let's bring it up. Yes. Yep. And then bring the spread up also. No, let it align to the top of the two. Great. Okay. So this is just an example. We are just, yes. But th this is a good way. The space between the honor and two spirits. So the, the space between the honor and two spirits. Yeah. Here. Yeah. So maybe we can close that gap. Already. Like bringing this up. Yep. Yep. Yeah. No, maybe, maybe take for now, take the, let's bring the rainbow up. So that takes this in dialogue with each other. The honor and two spirits is great. So let the two spirits still go up a little. Great. So that now when someone looks at this design by the rule of thirds, their attention would most likely draw on the and in two spirits first. The first thing, their yeah, attention will be drawn on. Okay. So you can adjust your brilliance and excellence maybe to fit somewhere beneath the spirits. Yeah. So that the attention is drawn there. You can explore further because of our time and everything. Yeah. But the idea is to, to just conscientize us that most, when people think design, they are thinking that let the tech be big, let it be in the middle. Those are the things people conceptualize to think that it's a good design. But most yeah. doesn't hit, okay? When we apply some of these principles, then we'll be able to come out with a better design. Okay. So. From your design, some of the things we've learned, color, font, font style, and then the sublimation. Yes, those are principles. Contrast, okay. And then you realize that when you are creating that extra bond between text, what you are doing is your contrast. Okay. And then the most important thing, alignment. For a good design, you should see that the alignment and everything are on point. Okay that it, it communicates a clear message. Oh, okay, so by way of that, let me just go ahead and share. I think I was doing something. Let me just wrap up. Is that they mentioned I can't share my screen? Or someone's oh, sharing. Um, she's done. You want to share sharing? it? Yeah, she's done. Um, oh, we, we, let me see. Uh, maybe you wait for you guys. So uh, I'll just probably wrap up with that. I was trying to put together some big in my screen. Can you see my PowerPoint? You no. Know? Okay. I'm trying to share my screen, but it's not working. So but a good design should communicate a clear message. I have sample designs here that I was going to show you, but I'm not able to share my screen. I'm not sure why. Maybe designs work on it. Give it fine. So let me just mention that. Okay, can you so that we can up? If you want, can you log over and log in again? Kind of. Yeah, I think you're not sitting. So when you log in, log in. In three minutes, you have to wrap up. All right. Yeah. That means you would have to make me. Yeah, I'm back in. Gizzy, can you see my screen? Not anymore. I did see it, but it's gone now. It just has a no. little icon. Yeah, it's user. Can you try your issue? It should be with Yeah. Is it working? Is it working now? Great. Okay. So I'll think that this one has a dominant feel. Thing. The design should be balanced. Okay. So when we talk about what we are referring in terms of balance is for the sign, you see the black, you have a light color, black, light color, black. They are all balanced. Okay. So you can imagine, suppose that this of the image, where this city is and these tall buildings, imagine that everything was flat. 
Then you realize that the black hole dominates the design. Then it becomes imbalanced. Over here, you see that it's quite balanced in terms of the tax sheet, uh, everything is balanced. So those are, that's also another point. Of a good. The other thing that it should be organized, okay? Good design should be organized. So this example here, there's a lot of use of negative speed. Everything is organized, the images, the reports, the everything is organized in this design. So that's another point design. And the other thing is that it should have obvious portal or target. So where do you so in this in this sample, where do you suppose that the designer wanted you to look at? He wants the full signs without borders. So you realize that all the things here are pointed towards it. Okay. So it has a defined audience that anybody, any person who gets to see this design will immediately get to see what is happening. And the person wants your attention to, to go. And then it should look polished. Okay. The other thing is that it should look polished in this design. This design looks quite polished. So. Earth Observer, Observatory of Singapore, everything here looks polished. The smoothness, excellence, it's a good design. Then last one would be that to be confident, okay? Here, do annual reports 2015 in one line. Okay? But this design, this designer is very confident. The same text, but you see what he does to it, okay? You see what the designer does to it? Quite old demo. Yeah. Well, I think this is becoming a very lengthy session. Okay, let me hear your thoughts. If the situation is up, but I really wish you could continue, but I cannot stay longer. The session can still continue if Yezzy wants him to continue. But if we want us to wrap up, we can wrap up. Yeah, so I think I'm just done. This is the last pointer. So maybe design, you can just talk about the for non profits, come up for non profits, and then we can roll. Gizzy, are you okay with that? Uh, sure. Yeah, Gizzy, you can feel free to reach out maybe after the session, anytime. Need help or something. Okay, let me just do the introduction to come up for non profits and get come up for free. And then with that, you can do adverse things than what we saw here. You can remove backgrounds. You can, oh, sorry. I just probably just draw my attention that um, I'm not being heard. Uh, okay. So I'll just, take it, I'll just take it again. Like I said, as a non-profit organization, you have the advantage of getting Canva for free. So meaning instead of paying for the subscription, you can just get it for free by submitting your non-profit information. So registry as a non and then cover, the cover team gets back to you. That way you can to use all the advanced features of Canva for free once you operate it for free and you are a suit. So text has offerings for non-profit. So as a text suit, once you register with text suit, which is free, you can get a lot of tools for free through text suit, convert, move for non-profit is where assets Google free with egos, ad credits, and all that. And also we can get this in Zoom. So you can get discount on Photoshop and most of the other tools once you are with testing. So what test does is helping this non-profit use technology for social good. And as what we do with the text for the next chapters, which are based in different countries, to help the women's shape to help non-profit use technology to share good. Like what we do right now, we are volunteering our skills on the text for the chapter leader from Ghana. Be the brain trust with us. He's volunteering his skills to help non use technology for social. I will wrap it up here and then if Ravi wants to wrap things up. And I'm, I think it bears this exchange of con contact here. You can connect, I think Ravi has shared his ego, so we can reach out to and then. Is still, is she still has? Yeah, I think so. Is I still with us? Yeah. Okay. I'll put my email and then my LinkedIn. I'm not sure which social media you're active on, but we can connect on LinkedIn. Okay. Another thing. So I'm going to end the recording.
and then it has to be memory has to can still proceed your design on the same portal that I'll get for the recording. So that depends on the two of you. If you want to still stay on it, wrap things up, you can pause the recording. That's the most your thing. Did what you think? Okay, thank you. I'm going to get started with my day. I don't know what time it is for you, but I woke up at five to be on here. Yeah, I think we will go have other things to do. So thank you so much, Robbie, for we appreciate having you. Thank you for coming in to keep it, share your skills. We learned so much and then thank you so much. Yes, thank you so much, both of you. Thank you. So let's go next. Okay, so I'm also going to exchange this. Can you share your contacts with, in the chat so that you can connect with LinkedIn and then with email? So Ravi has shared his, I will do so and you also share yours. That's my email. Okay, great. I will be useful as you take most of the email addresses and then. All right, so that is very productive section. We were supposed to use this and after this, the we looks that we learned so much. We're just supposed to learn how to create design. Deeper into the way, how to contrast colors, sublimation, something I'm hearing for the first time in graphic design and what well, that's very deep. I would really love to have a deep Ravi some of the in the upcoming events. I think he's been a very resourceful brain for us. The would love to have him back. I'm going to connect soon, connect with you, and then the feedback that will come down on the comment sections on where the video is uploaded as well. So thank you so much for your time. Oh, not today. Thank you, Daisy. Thank you, Ravi. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.